Good morning. My name is Anne Abarientos Aliga. I grew up in a Christian home, has been with GCF Ortiga since 1998, and is a founding member of the singing group Forward. In 2012, I got married to the love of my life, and we are now both serving in GCF Makati, apart from my music ministry involvement here in Ortigas. I was excited to raise my own family in the manner that I grew up in after getting an assurance from a doctor that I will have children. Little did I realize that God was teaching me a lesson during the process. Several months went by, but I did not conceive. My husband, Jojo, and I consulted another doctor. Test results showed both my tubes were blocked. It was next to impossible for me to have children. I grieved, I cried, and experienced walking through the valley instead of enjoying the mountaintop. That was when I learned to wait on the Lord and walked on Hannah's shoes. Hannah, whose story is found in 1 Samuel, was grieving for her inability to have a child. In her discouragement, she earnestly prayed to God. She also received encouragement from Eli that led her to leave her concern to God. A year later, she gave birth to Samuel, and in gratitude, she sang a joyful hymn of praise to God. So, instead of seeking another medical opinion, Jojo and I sought for God's direction on bended knees. My life verse, after all, is Psalm 27, 4. One thing I ask from the Lord, this is what I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and seek Him in His temple. After much prayer, we felt led to see another specialist. I went through another set of tests, and the news was good. My tubes, this time, are both open. We were given a few months to try to conceive naturally, but failed. Then more tests yet showed I had what they call a hostile immune system. We were sent to a reproductive immunologist for blood treatments, after which we again tried to conceive naturally, and yet again failed. We then tried artificial insemination. The first and the second attempts failed. The third was fearfully inconclusive. I was ready to give up, asking God for strength to accept His will. Then, the unexpected and unspeakable joy came. I was finally pregnant. God would then show more of his handiwork. There were no complications through the first five months with proper medication to make sure my system will not reject the baby. But on the sixth month, I had placenta previa, which required bed rest. And yet another cause of concern, our baby has a suspected hole in the heart. But it was a great relief when the condition was ruled out weeks later. Then the long wait was finally over. On May 2, 2015, I gave birth to a healthy baby boy and named him Yohan because he is God's gracious gift. He turned one last week. Every day, as I look at him, I am reminded of how faithful our God is. Didn't I tell you earlier about God's work in the process? During the three-year obstacle course, 
I went through different emotions back to back. Excruciating pain, grief, hope, and joy. All through this time, I learned to savor every moment of communion with our Lord. I now understand the reason for my Gethsemane. Because there, in the center of obstacles and pain, I realized God is sovereign and in control. He allows us to go through severe trials so that we could grow in Christ-likeness. He will invade us, reduce us, break us, so that we will become more like him. He changed us, especially me. The journey was faith-stretching, and we are still a work in progress. We still need prayers as we raise our little boy to know and love our God. He has made my heart more tender, more trusting, and fully dependent on Him. He gave me more opportunities to minister to others. I learned, most of all, that God's plan is better. He knows where we are. He knows where we are going. And He has prepared everything for us. He is creator, master, sustainer, father, mighty king. All praise and honor be to our almighty God.